Hey all, it's Alma from the Cat's Pajamas, and since we went digital, I thought I'd show you a couple of cool things that I discovered using Silhouette Studio. All the digis and SVGs in this video can be found at the Cat's Pajamas website, and I'll have the links in the description box below. First up is how to create cutting files from digi stamps. It's a great way to extend your digi stamps and create your own personalized designs that you can use with Silhouette Studio. You can use them to cut or even print and cut. I've gone ahead and opened Silhouette Studio, and now I want to open one of the Cat's Pajamas Digi Stamps. The first Digi I'll convert to a cutting file is the Holly Digi Stamp. This stamp is found in the Vintage Christmas Digi Stamp Set. To convert a Digi Stamp to a cutting file, we're going to have to trace it. So if you go to the right hand side of the workspace, you'll see a bunch of different icons that go up and down the side. We want to open the trace panel, and that's the one that looks like a butterfly on a piece of toast. Click on that icon, and your trace panel shows up. There are a few icons at the top, but the one that we are using is the first one that looks similar to the one on the side panel. Once that is selected, click the box that says Select Trace Area. Then click and drag a box over the entirety of the holly sprig. The gray box shows the trace area. Now let's go back to the trace panel. Select Solid Fill under the Trace Preview, and the trace area will show as yellow. If the area you want is not filled or not filled completely, you can adjust the threshold level until it's more to your liking. Sometimes if I'm tracing a fine script, not all of the areas are traced, and increasing the threshold helps find those missing areas. Once you're satisfied with the trace, go down to the Trace Style Palette and select the first option if your Digi has interior cutouts, like the stems in our holly here. If you want just the outline, you can select the second option, which is the Trace Outer Edge. For my project, I want all the insides cut out, so I'm selecting the Trace button. And that's it. You can see that there's a red outline around the image. That's the cut line. If I move the original image off, you can see it. Right now the holly is one cutting file, but I want to create two separate ones, one to cut the berry and one to cut the holly. So with the file selected, you can right click or go to the top. Select the object menu and select release compound path. Now you'll see all the cut areas are in their own separate boxes. To make the holly its own cutting path while the objects are still selected, hold down the shift key and click on each of the berries to deselect it. Once all the berries are deselected, you are left with the holly. Go back to the object menu or right click and select make compound path. That groups all the holly together and allows the cutouts for the stems in each of the leaves. I'll select the green color from the color palette so you can get a better idea of what I mean. You'll notice that there's a large rectangle that goes around the holly. Keep a note of that box. Now let's do the berries. Click and drag over the hollies and the berries, and once everything is selected, hold the shift key down, click on the large holly box that I told you to keep note of to deselect it. Now the only thing selected are the holly berries. Let's make these guys red. And now we can get rid of the original since we don't need it anymore. And I'll just group the holly and the holly berries together. What we're left with now is a colored holly sprig. We can cut that out or even print and cut it. I want to use this design on a couple of projects, so I'll keep on going. Now I'll open the transform panel on the right hand side. It's the one with the three bars with the line through it. At the top of the panel, choose the third icon at the top to rotate. I'm choosing to rotate this group by minus 90 degrees. Then I'm going to duplicate this by choosing the replicate icon on the right. It's below the transform panel and it looks like an atom. I want to mirror this holly with a duplicate, so I'm going to choose mirror left. I want this holly to look like one unit instead of two. 
and I'll do that first by getting rid of one set of fairies. Right click on the new holly and ungroup. Delete the three berries that are clustered together and then regroup the remainder of the berries and the holly. Then move it closer to the other holly sprig. Once it's there, you can see that one of the berries gets in the way. So let's adjust it by right clicking on the sprig on the right and ungrouping. Now I can move the berry to where I want it. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's group the whole thing together. So now I'll just make it smaller so that it fits on my page better. Let's add one more element to this design. I've already added the December 25th Digi from the Vintage Christmas Digi stamp set, and now I want to make it into a cut file. So I'll open the trace panel again and select the trace area button and select the area to trace. Adjust the threshold slider. You can see here as I play with the slider, the arms of the E get thicker and thinner. I'll just choose the best option for my design. Then I'll click on the trace button under the trace style. I'll just move the original digi stamp off the page and you can see the cutting paths. If I select it all and right click, I can see that one of the options is to release the compound path. That means that the cutting path is already a compound path and that all those interior paths in the D and the 25 will cut out and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to copy the paths and paste it directly into the file with the holly. I'll make it a little bit smaller by entering three and a half inches and making sure that the padlocks close so I'll keep all the dimensions. Now it's just a matter of fine tuning the design to what I want. When I've got it the way I want it, I can just change the color of the December 25th so I can see it better and I'll save the file. Next up, I'll be showing you how to create a single layer cutting file for multi-layer SVGs. You'll need at least the designer edition to be able to open up an SVG. Now if you've ever purchased a layered SVG, they're easy to stack one layer on the next to create seamless die cuts for your paper crafts or pages. But if you want to use vinyl to create a mug or t-shirt for example, it's better to have no more than a single layer, two layers max, to attach directly to the item. Multi-layers can peel up. And if you have multiple colors, you can still create a single layer project. I'm going to show you how. For my project, I'm going to select and open the Santa from the red and black ornaments tag file. If we select each of the different parts of this tag, you can see that the layers are all meant to be assembled on the gray base layer. For my project, I only want one layer and I want to get rid of that loop at the top. And it's really simple to do. So let's click the undo arrow a couple of times to put the parts back in place. Now we'll go to the column on the right and select the Modify icon to open the Modify panel. The icon looks like a rectangle with a circle in one corner. Once the panel opens, there are different buttons in it, like Weld, Subtract All, Divide, etc. And there are illustrations that show you what each button does. And if you hover over the illustrations, there are descriptions as well. So let's select all of the Santa and click Subtract All. That was easy, wasn't it? Well, we're not done. It's important to check to see if there are any residual parts that were created from the subtraction. We can do this by selecting the Send button. Now, this will show us any cutting paths in the file. So let's start by pulling apart the design. Here you can see the residual parts that were created. They seem to center around the base area. There are a lot of them, but don't worry, they're easy to get rid of. So back to the design page we go. First we select the base and right click ungroup. Here are all the residual bits. 
I like to call them Klingons. Now I'll just select them all, including the loop at the top that I don't need, and delete. Now we'll go back to send and check again. All the Klingons are gone, and now I can assemble the Santa parts and save. And that's it. It's that easy to create a single layer cutting file from multi-layer SVGs. I hope you give it a try. Have a great day.